Dr. Cassie from NABC's Vetfolio and the host of vet to vet As a practice owner myself, I am very aware that veterinary medicine is about way more than just practicing good medicine. Knowing how your practice stacks up against other practices can really empower you to make sound business decisions. Dr. Katie Nelson is joining me today. She's the Associate Director of Veterinary Relations for Chewy Health. She's practiced veterinary medicine for over 20 years and has spent much of that time working in emergency care and general practice. Dr. Nelson, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Cassie. It's good to see you. Yes, yes, you too. I'm really excited to learn about this. This has kind of taken me back to um, to vet school a little bit where I was fortunate mm-hmm. enough to be able to study business, the business side of veterinary medicine a little bit. Um, and certainly one of the things we talked about fairly extensively was benchmarking. So let's mm-hmm. start right at the beginning. What is benchmarking? Well, really simply, benchmarking is just the process of comparing yourself to your peers. I know we're never supposed to compare ourselves, but when it comes to business, it's actually a really good thing to do. Um, Benchmarking insights can serve as a point of reference for a business to evaluate its own performance in relation to the industry and identify any problem areas that you might be having and make any changes. So, you know, for veterinary practices, benchmarking insights are different than like the data you might get from your PIMS or some other analytics platform. You might be able to make limited assumptions based on what changes need to be made, but without being able to actually compare yourself and cross-checking yourself where you stand relative to the rest of the industry, your decisions can be just sometimes shot in the dark. So uh, with benchmarking insights, you can actually compare to prepare. Are you charging enough for your services? Is your team overworked? Um, Are you practicing the same standard of care across the practice? And the result of that is a tool that can actually lead to a successful business, satisfied clients, and exceptional patient care. That makes a lot of sense, especially, you know, I'm just thinking personally of myself, and and I think I have this in common with with many colleagues um, in in all walks of veterinary medicine, that, you know, we lead with our hearts, and, you know, sometimes it can be tempting to to sort of give away the store, um, whether it's via time or or prices or things like that. So, um, yeah, having that information about how we stack up against other practices can be really empowering to, to help us make decisions and really stick by them. Absolutely. So how does Chewy factor in here? Why does Chewy Health value benchmarking? Well, um, we are more than just food and treats. And I, I think that's something that uh, the industry is starting to, to realize. As Chewy's healthcare arm, Chewy Health focuses on leveraging innovation to drive the industry forward. So primarily through services, solutions and programs that not only improve quality and access to care for every pet, but also prioritizes the well-being of veterinary professionals. So from a digital prescription management platform to a high-quality compounding pharmacy, uh, one of our main priorities is to provide tools and opportunities that support veterinary teams in and outside of practice. A digital benchmarking tool provides these unique business insights for practices and the opportunity to make impactful choices that can improve the quality of veterinary care within that individual practice, as well as drive positive change for pets, pet parents, and practitioners across the industry. So when we acquired Petabyte, this allowed us to do this most efficiently and at scale. So Petabyte created Benchmarking Plus originally in partnership with AHA, And when we acquired Petabyte a few years ago, we were able to put the Chewy resources behind this already very powerful and effective platform to really help make it accessible to as many veterinary practices as possible. So this allowed us to provide Benchmarking Plus at no cost to all Chewy Health Tool users and all AHA members, reinforcing our commitment to advancing the industry while enhancing the well-being of veterinary professionals. So it's a very significant step towards our goal of making Benchmarking Plus available and accessible to the entire profession. Sure, kind of building up that platform to where we can all kind of lean on each other to to make sure we're making good business decisions. I mean, this is a time of just amazing change in the veterinary profession. So kind of leaning into the resources that we have to help elevate the entire profession. And we know change can be scary and veterinarians can be very resistant to it, (laughs) as we all know. Um, But change can also be really good too. And it can also be quite empowering. Sure, sure. Absolutely. 
you know, thinking about benchmarking, I mentioned that, you know, I was fortunate in vet school. We had a business program. Um, I went to the University of Florida and, and we had a business program when I was there and we talked about benchmarking and there were these books available and they would summarize all the available metrics for veterinary practices. And we would flip through for all the different procedures and kind of compare and, and analyze different practices. So thinking about these, these big books that I remember flipping through, what's the difference with this platform compared to the metrics that we're used to in the past? Well, I, I remember those as well. Um, and, you know, the main thing, first and foremost, is that this is digital. So um, historically, these benchmarking tools were just like you described them, you know, a very manual process and in, in manual form, if you will. Um, and the data was collected usually by survey. And then those results were interpreted by a person. Um, it could be months or even years before the results were printed and published and found their way into a veterinary practice or a veterinary school. The result of that is that these benchmarking insights were outdated. And they were based on potentially biased data. You know, we talked about collecting via survey um, and they weren't personalized to your practice. So therefore a lot of this information um, wasn't very useful to practices really looking to make meaningful change. And so there are more digitized versions of these benchmarking platforms that you know, might have your practice uploading spreadsheets or if it does connect to the PEM system, it could be delivered slower instead of daily, like most practices would really need to make the most relevant decisions for their practice. And finally, the reports. So a digital platform should really allow practices to see exactly where they stand as compared to their peers with easy to understand reports that provide the information that they actually need when they actually need it. So not all benchmarking insights are created equal. Um, we've actually found that in addition to you know, really embracing the opportunities a digital platform presents, that there are a few essential factors to a benchmarking platform that are really key in Benchmarking Plus. One is standardized data, two is live information, and three is truly easy to understand insights. So with Benchmarking Plus, we use proprietary software to transform this data behind the scenes to really ensure that the insights are unified, normalized, and accurate. So when it comes to benchmarking, we're comparing, if you will, cats to cats, <laughs> apples to apples, uh, rather than cats to dogs, uh, and leading to more accurate insights, and therefore you're able to make better business and medical decisions for your practice. So to standardize this information accurately, your PEMS needs to be cleaned, matched, and normalized. So if you think of it like cooking, cleaning and matching your data is like washing and prepping and organizing your ingredients, right? So we review all of this PIM data, not just a few years or a few items, um, but it's all of it. Actually, it goes all the way back to the beginning of your PIMS data. And so we're going to remove any outdated data, um, any incorrect data, if, if any irrelevant data, and then we take it, we identify it and correct it for any inconsistencies. So this makes sure back to our cooking uh, metaphor that we're only using the freshest, most relevant ingredients. Um, and that way, you know, this can be as basic as correcting any misspellings or double entries or different entries for the same item. Um, I, I know, for example, we had uh, one practice that had nine different spellings of the breed Abyssinian. And so that can definitely, uh, you know, mess with your data because that's going to come in as nine different breeds of cat, um, you know, that are all going to have very, you know, similar, similar quirks, obviously, but that's going to really mess with your data. So, um, you know, it can be as simple as that, or it can be as complicated as, you know, identifying inactive patients that are still marked as active. And that's all through a series of cross checks, like medical history and soap notes and client accounts. Um, and then we take all of that and standardize it. So we have our own like standardized recipes or catalogs uh, to ensure the consistency. Um, and we built them based on the AHA chart of accounts and medical problems catalog. And in addition to about 20 other standardized lists of breeds, appointment types, producer type, vendor labs, um, drugs and vet diets, uh, vaccines by type and manufacturer, um, and, and, and a lot more just to normalize the data for this, you know, true apples to apples comparison. And while, you know, every practice out there is going to have their own recipe, if you will, um, to produce, uh, in order for us to produce accurate insights, 
we've got to follow that one cookbook to make sure that every dish is prepared the same way and it allows us for the cleanest possible comparisons. Um, so, you know, all of this might sound like a really complicated process, but that's the beauty of Benchmarking Plus is that once you set up the migration tool, we take over and we manage everything from the kitchen, <laughs> right? So your job is just to sit down and eat. So, uh, which, you know, basically is to sit down and analyze um, that data that you get back and take action. And, you know, unlike other benchmarking platforms, we have the technology to not only standardize this and anonymize a database to produce accurate data, we also have the technology to pull this live, which is, I think, the biggest difference in our platform um, as compared to many others. So, you know, every day when you log into Benchmarking Plus, you are getting the most accurate and most up-to-date information about what's working in your practice and what isn't. So this live benchmarking data lets you really truly make business and medical decisions that reflect your immediate needs and, and the gaps that are happening in that moment. So with lives and with um, a live feed of information, you're able to actually make proactive decisions instead of having to wait for a problem to occur. Wow. My head is like spinning, just kind of thinking, I'm going back to the books and like thinking through how you know how this was done before and absolutely like this was data that was several years old and it was taken from a limited number of practices so with what you're talking about i see so many advantages um just how you explain there uh the the live data the sheer amount of data we're not talking about something that's outdated and then i'm also thinking about um you know just thinking about myself personally setting up a pims and i'm uh certainly no technology expert no one would ever accuse me of that so I would probably be the one who would have nine different spellings of Abyssinian. And uh, and it almost sounds like it would kind of help um, maybe turn those those light bulbs on in our heads to say, hey, here's a place where, you know, you might not, you know, your PIMS might not be functioning up to what you need uh, in order to get the most accurate data for your own practice. So it seems like, you know, just benefits all around. Yeah, it, it really does. And, you know, now that we have this like live and personalized data, you know, that's the big thing, you know, is that it's it's really personalized to your practice and it's it's standardized. But, you know, it doesn't do us any good to have all of this information if we don't know what to do with it. Right. So, you know, I certainly am not you know, we mentioned earlier, we're, we're not tech wizards. Um, certainly not. I, I stink at spreadsheets. <laughs> so, you know, I. Definitely, if you were handing me all of these things, would they would not be very useful for me if you did not show me, you know, a, a simple way to understand and comprehend and utilize all of this. So for benchmarking really to be useful, we need it to be, you know, converted into this curated selection of reports that are easy for us to, to digest, that are easy for us to interpret. And so you can not only identify what's going really well, um, and maybe what needs a little TLC within your practice, but it also makes it easy to take action. So, you know, not only are these benchmarking plus reports you know, designed for like, visual clarity, you can actually see where you stand as compared to the rest, um, but they're also designed to focus on the inf information that you actually need because it's it's easy to get swept away by you know, platforms that give you tons of reports, right? But But a lot of times when there's that many reports, a lot of them don't provide that much depth or substance. So you know, we wanted to focus really on quality over quantity. And so that's why we have two main dashboards with a select number of reports. And each one was chosen very intentionally um, and designed to efficiently convey the necessary information to make effective decisions within your practice. Okay, so I love that you brought up the dashboards because let's get into this platform and talk about the dashboards. When I log into the platform, can you kind of go over what are we looking at here and how does what I'm seeing in the platform impact my practice and my practice decisions? Okay. Yeah, so we have two sets of dashboards and they're pretty cute names. Um, Spot and Fido are our two dashboards. Um, and each of those have several reports within each one. So we can start with Spot. So one of the key features of the Spot dashboard is that it provides you with a Spot score which is the overall performance of your practice compared to the industry average. 
So the SPOT score is calculated based on a practice's performance and it's four spotlight dashboards. So that's sales revenue, producer performance, opportunities, and trends in medicine spot. So these dashboards were designed to show you where you're at um, in terms of industry standards and where you're at within your practice. So, you know, how many opportunities is your staff bringing into the practice in addition to existing clients? Um, how much revenue does each exam produce? How successful is your forward booking rate? You know, most practices are surprised to know that the average forward booking rate across the country is less than 6%. And, you know, actually, most people are surprised to even learn that forward booking rate is a thing because they're, they're not even quite sure what it is. So, it's like when you walk out of your dentist office, Cassie, do they ever let you walk out without setting your appointment, you know, four to six months from now? No, I know mine and doesn't. If they did, I would stop and say, no, we need to set that appointment because I will not right. remember anything in six months from now. Correct. Absolutely. And so, you know, dentists are really great about doing that. Even eye doctors or, um, you know, your doctor, when you have to recheck your blood work or something like that, they're really great about making sure that you've got that next appointment set. We are not great at that, you know, maybe for like a puppy appointment where they're coming back in three weeks or four weeks, but, you know, do they ever walk out of their annual exam and we've got a six month recheck set for them very, very rarely. So that's what that forward booking rate is. Um, so then we get back to our FIDO dashboard. So FIDO is actually a, a much more recent addition to Benchmarking Plus, um, and it consists of four dashboards. So fee reference inventory, doctor opportunities, and optimize employee health, which is one of my favorites. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but the FIDO dashboards give practice managers the opportunity to better understand where they're making or losing revenue. So for example, the inventory dashboard shows you, you know, what you buy items for, what you mark them up as, and what you make as a profit from it. The fee reference dashboard will then show you how much other practices are charging for the same items so that you can make sure that you're pricing yourself competitively and consistently with those around you. Um, and then given our focus on well-being, one of, like I mentioned, one of my personal favorite dashboards is the employee health dashboard, the optimized employee health dashboard. Um, and it helps practice managers track for signs of burnout and it helps them to support their team's well-being. So for example, it provides a, a really concise view of your employee well-being in order to help the managers, you know, gauge team health, pinpoint those in need of additional support. So there are four reports that delve into factors that affect burnout and compassion fatigue. So it, you know, encounters with time consuming um, or aggressive clients or difficult patients, um, hours worked past their benchmarks. So, you know, overtime hours um, and how many euthanasia appointments are handled by one particular doctor. So if one doctor has seen you know, way too many euthanasia appointments or another doctor has been dealing with like every difficult client that walks into the practice, the dashboard is going to track that. And that allows practice managers to really take proactive steps to alleviate like potential compassion fatigue or burnout and encourage a more balanced work environment for their team. So, you know, overall, these dashboards were designed to help practices understand their own performance better and to make the necessary adjustments before um, an issue arises. Wow. I love that. Optimized employee with optimized employee health. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is, that's phenomenal to have that type of measure there. Um, because, you know, if you get someone who is really good with euthanasias or really good with difficult clients, it can be easy to kind of slip into that pattern of, oh, well, they'll handle it when Yep. Meanwhile, you know, they're, they're burning out and not saying anything. Uh, so yep. yeah, catching problems before they occur. And, you know, we've talked about making decisions kind of in the moment to help benefit your practice. Well, now we have good motivation. Okay. We need to start training somebody else to be good at this too. So we can spread Absolutely. it all around. That's fantastic. Absolutely. And I think it also can help practice managers too. Um, you know, we're talking about being proactive, but there, it also can help you to be reactive as well. So if you do have an employee that comes to you and says, um, you know, I, I feel like I see every angry cat. I feel like I see, you know, every euthanasia. I feel like every client that I talk to has no money or, or whatever it may be. Um, you can actually go in and look at that as well. And 
you know, let's say this person is obviously like what we just talked about, we can make changes, but let's say that this person is actually seeing basically the same as everyone else within the practice. There's ways to help that person too. You know, maybe they need some efficiency training on, on, you know, getting out of the rooms quickly or, you know, more quickly, or maybe they need some help with um, doing their soaps more quickly, or maybe it is that they just need some emotional support because, this, you know, particular client's pet that they had to euthanize hit them really hard. But, you know, it really allows us to say, okay, yes, you are seeing this or no, you're actually doing about the same, but you're obviously struggling with it. So let's figure out how to help you in that area as well. That's such a, such an amazing insight that I don't know that we've really had access to before. And, you know, with, with mental health and burnout being such a topic of conversation in veterinary medicine, I could see that really just helping with longevity and just overall yeah. mental health and well-being of, of the entire staff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. So I, I mean, this sounds like a really powerful platform that can benefit a lot of practices, you know, in doing benchmarking like we've done in the past, but doing it in a whole new way that's that's much faster, more comprehensive and, and relevant to our practices. So now that we kind of know what the platform is, what benchmarking is, I am going to ask the question that's kind of on, on everyone's mind. We're yeah. sharing our practice data. You know, we're kind of opening the door with our PIMS there to, to share this with all of the other practices out there with Chewy Health. Is it safe to share my practice data? So Chewy Health um, implements strong, modern, and secure encryption protocols to protect all user data. So all data that is handled using Benchmarking Plus is anonymized, encrypted, and stored securely at every step of its journey. And it's protected to prevent reversibility as well. So most importantly though, you own your own data. Chewy does not access or use Benchmarking Plus data outside of what is allowed in the EULA or contrary to federal, state, or local privacy laws. Okay. So it sounds like, like you said, it's anonymized and it's really, our data is only for the benefit of this benchmarking plus platform. It's not going for any other use. No, that's, uh, that I think would makes us all feel better. What would you say <laughs> to someone who, you know, someone who might hear that and go, okay, you know, I, I hear you that my, my data is safe, but maybe on the fence about sharing their practice data, you know, for competitive reasons to say, you know, I'm not sure if I want to put all of that out there. And, you know, I would say I completely understand, um, you know, your practice's data tells its own story, um, but benchmarking can actually help to interpret that story so that you can start to write the next chapter. Um, so there's no benchmarking without data. So, you know, even though it's the most essential aspect of benchmarking, it can also be the scariest, you know, the idea of sharing data can be daunting. Um, but, you know, in today's digitally connected world, it's actually also unavoidable. So that's why it's so important to choose a solution that ensures your data is anonymized, standardized, and encrypted at every step. So Benchmarking Plus keeps your data entirely secured, protected, and anonymized at all times. And that way, the trends that you and every other practice have access to only serve to improve the quality of care that you're able to offer your team, your clients, and your patients. So it's about teamwork. With every new user, Benchmarking Plus has more data to analyze and therefore can provide better insights. So another huge benefit of more participating practices is filters. Um, right now, Benchmarking Plus does offer some very select filters like by region, but we're limited on how many filters we can offer in order to protect the anonymity of the participating practices. So if you want to be able to zoom in further on insights based on you know, practice type, for example, such as specialty or emergency, we're going to need more practices to join benchmarking. Um, and so, you know, for me, it, I kind of think of it as um, 10 years ago, if you did one of the um, ancestry DNA tests, right? Um, Cassie Fleming, is this, is this like a, a Norwegian name or a, a, a Finnish name, I would, I would assume? Um, you know, if you did your DNA 10 years ago, let's say it comes back and you're from Norway, you know, it's going to tell you you're from, Nor you're from Norway. 90% of your DNA is Norwegian, but it's just going to tell you that. And then the other 10% is maybe from France, let's say. 
if you did it now, you know, after millions and millions and millions of DNA samples have been done, it's really going to be able to you know, hone down and just say, this is the particular region where 50% of your DNA is from in Norway. And this is the particular, you know, town that your, your DNA is from in, in France, because with all of that data that we're able to put in there, we're able to filter down much more clearly. And I compare this to benchmarking plus, you know, once we're able to get many more practices and vet schools and specialty hospitals and all of this data in there, it's really going to help us to be able to pinpoint and bring it down to exactly what your practice is looking for and being able to get that to a more regional um, area or, or a more uh, pinpointed area without, you know, as I said, the, the, the compromise of anonymity of your practice. That makes sense. It sounds like what you're saying is there's you know, we live, like you said, in this digital age where sharing data is, you know, sort of unavoidable in a lot of situations. And in this case, it sounds like there's every protection possible to anonymize that data and keep it safe. And there's so many benefits that that probably or, or definitely outweigh the risk of sharing mm -hmm. that data. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, I'm curious, you know, as more and more practices kind of embrace benchmarking, which benchmarking in and of itself is not a new concept. This is just a new way to do it. So as right. more and more practices join Benchmarking Plus, what does a veterinary profession that really embraces and optimizes benchmarking as a tool look like in your eyes? Well, I mean, I think the goal is for every veterinary practice to have, you know, this unprecedented access to a tool that can actually help to encourage proactive decision-making for continuous improvement in your practice. And we want to normalize veterinary practices tapping into the veterinary community as a resource. You know, benchmarking really harnesses the power of community data so that individual practices and the collective veterinary field can deliver better, faster, and more accessible pet care. So after all, you know, we're in the business of bettering the lives of pets and the people who care for them. And, you know, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, listening to you go over these dashboards and, you know, how much benefit it can provide to an individual practice um, and then comparing that to flipping through the books 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, it certainly makes me want to know more, learn more about the about Benchmarking Plus. So how can we learn more? You can schedule a consult with our team. So whether you want to tour the platform first and learn a bit more about it, or you're just ready to sign up ASAP, our team can help you kickstart your benchmarking plus journey. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, that seems easy enough. You know, we're all used to kind of booking these, these consults and then able to learn more. Dr. Nelson, this has been such a great talk. Thank you so much for joining me and, and helping us all to learn more about benchmarking plus. Thank you so much, Cassie. I really appreciate you and the whole team. And thank you to Chewy Health for partnering with us for this edition of vet to vet Check out NAVCsVetfolio.com for more of our V2V discussions on various topics in veterinary medicine. And remember, if one animal is better off because of you today, it's a great day. Mm -hmm.